this goes to both of you. We can start with Rob. Uh, you've done so many wildly different characters throughout both your careers. What makes Pinky and the Brain stand out and what keeps bringing you back? Well, it's a job. I, it's a job. <laughs> I uh, Wow. I owe my soul to the company store. Um, <laughs> well, look, uh, firstly, thank you for speaking with us. Um, it, uh, I'm often asked, what is your favorite character? And generally, I say the next one because it means I'm working. But honestly, um, I, it, when you have the opportunity to invest so much into um, such a special character and such a special relationship that connects with, and I'm, I don't think it's hyperbole, hundreds of millions of people, it's ridiculous to, be, to, to literally sit back and think, oh my God, I, I, I really truly had no idea of the extent to which these characters connect themselves to people's souls only because they're happy and joyful. Uh, and so that this is a very unique chemistry. Maurice and I are the best of friends in real life. And it I have to say that I think that energy and translates into the characters. Absolutely. And Maurice, how about you? Is it the same kind of reasoning? Um, yes, I mean, I, uh, I'm, 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 I am always uh, honored and enamored uh, that these characters uh, resonate with with the audience so much. I think, you know, it's a classic comedy uh, formula. Peter Cook and Dudley Moore uh, nailed it as the uninformed idiot and the informed idiot, <laughs> and so. You know, yeah. while brain while brain Excellent. has this really high IQ and understands science like infundibulators and that type of thing, uh, he's not smart enough to figure out that a two inch tall lab mouse can't take over the world. <laughs> uh, you know, so there's a there's definitely both genius and insanity there. Um, so uh, you know, but but the formula it's Ralph Cramden and Ned Norton. It's it's you know it's it's That's just well. it's. Yeah. It's Abbott and Costello, you know, it's, it's those, it's, it's that, the, the two hander, uh, and, and they go through everything together and, and, you know, one of them is always, going, what's the matter with you, you know, or whatever, <laughs> but you know, it's there, the, the, it's truly, Rob has put it well, a love story. And, um, and it's just that one of them can't let the other one know how much he loves him because yep. he's, he's a curmudgeon. <laughs> Absolutely. And Maurice, something I really wanted to ask was, you know, though Brain's voice was inspired by Orson Welles for a couple of generations, it's that's Brain's voice. That's their first uh -huh. association. What does that kind of association mean to you? Well, it means I've introduced a lot of young people to the films of Orson Welles because, you know, even though I did the voice, because when I looked at that model sheet, I saw Welles, even though they didn't intend for it to be Welles. Um, People at conventions, young people at conventions have said, because of Pinky and the Brain, because of Brain's voice, my dad had Citizen Kane on TV one night and went, that sounds like Brain. <laughs> and, then, and, then they, and then they suddenly get fascinated, as they must, by Wells and his career, because he's such a fascinating career and he's such a magnetic actor. Um, and, and so I'm, I'm glad through my little parodical uh, tip of the hat to have introduced young people to a wider world of cinema. For sure. And my last question is uh, for both of you, since this is the last season, what do you hope to be parodying in the uh, next reboot in 2040? <laughs> well said. Good parodying, for you. I guess we'd be parodying like, uh, you know, adult diaper commercials. <laughs> they, may not, they may not be a parody. They may be, in fact, how we're getting by. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, we have... Uh, as you can imagine, so much gratitude for just this opportunity. Um, but if I would dare to uh, to hope, I I've been really really keen on the idea of a pinky in the brain feature. Um, I'm not keen on that at all. I wouldn't yeah, do that. No, not no feature film. <laughs> he wants to why would I want a feature film? Yeah. He wants to get no, back I, to managing an Ace Hardware, but I I want to yeah. keep going, and I I um. Uh, whatever that means, because the, in, in, the, the, the folks, firstly, Mr. Spielberg, all the way on down, the creative folks 
who would take on that sort of uh, challenge. I, I, they're so smart. And I, I just could not wait to see what they would come up with. Because as Mo said, we got a, a two hour buddy picture and trying to find out how to take over the world for God's sake. It's pretty cool. Yeah. I, you know, they, they've done, you know, they've done other classic cartoon pairings Ooh. and certainly they brought Bugs Bunny back uh, to, to life a couple of times and, and uh, Tom and Jerry. It's not outside their own possibility that these characters, especially with the kind of dialogue that occurs, oh, you know, between them uh, would, would fill out, uh, you know, a great quest picture. So who knows, you know, yeah. I'm putting in my pitch, but, you know, not with celebrity stunt recasting. <laughs> We can't. Ma Maurice has always thought they would threaten to have Peter Dinklage, Peter Dinklage, and Russell Brand. Yeah, that's the, my <laughs> nightmare. And, and I admire them both tremendously. Yeah, and that's my nightmare scenario. Of, yeah, we're the good news is we're doing a Pinky and the Brain movie. The bad news is it's Peter Dinklage and Russell Brand. And it's like, okay, well, where's the cliff? <laughs> <laughs> Noted. Well, that's all the time I have. Thank you both so much, and have a good rest. You of bet, your Spencer. Day. Thank you, Spencer. Thanks so much.